Hey guys, it's Dr. Simmer and welcome back to another tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how I made my end slate. Now if you haven't seen my end slate, you can basically go to the end of any of my video and you'll be able to see it. But I'm just going to show you how I make it and uh, give you a few tips, I guess, on ways that you could make it. You know, I guess, if that makes sense. I don't know. So, the first thing you will need, of course, as all my tutorials go, is GIMP, which is the program I am in currently. And it's awesome. You just go to the website here, GIMP, uh, GIMP.org. You click on this download 2.8.20 or whatever version they have at the time. And then you click that and then you will download GIMP. And be sure to download it for the OS that you have, the operating system, you know, whether you have Windows or whatever. I don't know if it's for Mac, but uh, yeah. And then, you know, you can choose your language. But uh, yes, and then the next thing you will need is Windows Movie Maker. This is for this specific tutorial. If you have a different editing program, then, you know, it'll probably work the same. Well, probably not the same. You probably have more options. But uh, any video editor will uh, suffice. So uh, yeah, you just go to the Windows Movie Maker download page right here. I'll have all the links in the description for you guys. And then be sure to download it for your OS. And, you know, whether it's 7, 8, 10, XP, Vista, whatever. Next, you will need, of course, music or uh, some type of sound. You can make your own, you know, that's fine. Or uh, you can find a YouTube channel that has non-copyrighted music. That way, um, if you're going to monetize your videos, uh, you won't get a copyright strike or anything. And you'll still be good. And then the final thing, I guess, is technically optional, but not really. It's like just an idea or a template design. I usually sketch mine out um, in my sketchbook, as I do with my intro and everything else. I pretty much do like all the graphic stuff that I do for my channel. I will sketch it out in my sketchbook. But if you're not good with sketching or anything, you can, uh, you know, just draw it in paint or something. Well, I mean, I guess it's technically still drawing, but um, it's just a basic idea. Like, you just use shapes or something. I'll show you real quick. Um, you know, this isn't going to be very good because I'm just using my mouse and not my tablet. But, you know, just sketch out an idea. Like, um, let's make this a little bit smaller, actually. For mine, I'll just sketch out a quick uh, layout of what I have. Like, up here is where I have my logo. Yeah, it's beautiful, I know. And then over here is where I have my... Previous, I'll just stick a P there because that's what I'm gonna, yeah. And then there's another box over here where I have my featured, and yeah, I'm not great at drawing with a mouse, so um, yeah, just ignore my art skills. I, I swear I'm a lot better than this. But and then down here, I've got like four little social things that I use. I think I have my Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Tumblr, possibly. I don't know. And then I just have the links like out next to them here. And, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's basically all I have. And then this is where I put my, um, video links for the InSlate, which you don't actually do on the template. You do that, um, on YouTube once the video is uploaded and processed. But, um, yeah, this is basically the layout I use for my current InSlate. So, uh, you can just sketch yours out however you like. And, um, you just have to be sure that, um, if you're going to add... A link to your logo thing it'll have to be somewhere around um, let's just make this real quick um, I believe it's somewhere like around this area or so um, there's like a specific area that you can actually add the um, the elements to in the insight thing on YouTube so you'll have to be sure that you keep everything that you're gonna add something to in this area like the um, template slots which I will show you whenever we get to actually making the template. But, um, yeah. So you'll have to be sure you keep everything that is going to be clickable in this um, boxed area. Because that's the only um, place that you can add things. At least in my experience. I've never been able to add it outside the box. So I don't know if it's actually possible. But, um, yeah. You'll just need to um, keep in mind what you're going to be adding to it. And where it's going to be going. And you may want to, like... Um, upload a test video that you're just going to delete later. That way you'll be able to see where you, um, where you can put all of these things. And then usually what I'll do, I will take a screenshot. That way you know how big you need the squares to be. I'll just take a screenshot and, uh, like, 
have the video in full windowed mode and then just take a screenshot of it and then put it into GIMP. All you have to do is, um, you know, screenshot however you screenshot on your computer and then just paste it into GIMP without opening anything else. And then you can create your template from that um, depending on where you have all your stuff. And there's also um, built-in templates that, templates that you can use if you're just going to use like a plain background or something. You can use those and, you know, it, it's just easy. And then um, once you have the first one made, and if you're just going to use the same template over and over again, then you can just um, go to import from video in the Inslate Maker part place thing on YouTube, and it will automatically put it in at the um, timestamp because it like recognizes where the Inslate is in your video. And all you'll have to do is just change the videos that you want there, which is really easy. It'll be on the left side, the right side of the video and it's just really easy just to um, change the video that you want featured in the preview and the featured or whatever else you have you can add up to four elements onto your end slate so if you want four videos then you'll have four boxes here if you want um, two videos and then your logo if you want your logo clickable mine is not it's just part of the background but if you want it clickable then you'll need to leave space for that because they can't really be overlapping and so you'll need to leave space for that, but that'll count as three different elements. So you'll only be able to have um, the logo and then three videos if you're going to have more than two videos, which I only have uh, three, uh, two elements um, altogether. I just have my two videos and my logo is part of the background because on my videos, I have my um, little subscriber count button thing in the lower right corner of my videos. So... People could just click that if they want to subscribe to my channel or just, you know, exit out of the video and subscribe. But you can add a button to your insight if you want uh, that. It'll just count as an extra as another element. So you'll have less other elements, which I believe um, the four things that you can add is the subscriber count. You can add um, a link to another channel and you can add links to videos and you could have links to um, sites that YouTube recognizes, which I did try my uh, Facebook and everything on that, and it was it didn't really let me do that, so I don't think you'll be able to add those. But yeah, that's uh, basically it for that bit, uh, my awful art. So let me just close that, and I will um, show you guys what I do. Okay, so the size you will need for your outro, uh, the, well, the size I use at least, is 1920 by 1080 pixels. And you will have your background here. This is not the plain background. It's just uh, the background I use. It's just the same as I use it for my intro. That way, you know, they have some sort of continuity. They look kind of the same. And they look like they go together. And so, uh, yeah, that's just what I use. You can, you know, do something completely different if you prefer. But, um, yeah, I just like being simple. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my logo. So I'm going to go ahead and go in here and find my logo, which is somewhere. I think it's this one here. And then you will resize it to however you want. And I have my logo in the top center, so I'm just going to resize it to about there, I guess, will work. And just choose how far you want it from the top, really. And then I'll have mine, I guess, about there. It would be fine. And then you will go to this tool here, the alignment tool. Click into the square where your logo is. And then you can click this button to align center of target, and it will move it to the center of the image that way you won't have to you know try and um, um, get it best center as you can that'll just automatically put it in the center if you want it in the middle of the image all together then you can just click it and you can click uh, the same align center of target and then the bottom align middle of target and it'll just put it in the middle of the image but I have mine up here at the top so that's where I'm gonna put it and then you will want to mark out where you're gonna have your videos and um, you want to make sure that they're good enough size so that they don't overlap any of your other links and so that um, they're in the box area of where you can put them, which I'm sure if you um, search on Google a template that is similar to what you want, you can um, use that to see. And you'll probably find one that has like the dimensions and everything where you can put links and everything. So um, yeah, feel free to look for one of those. And that'll have like the correct dimensions and everything that you'll need. But um, I usually just uh, wing it. So that's what I'm going to do. But I do want them to be sort of even. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, go to, I'm going to right click on my image. 
go to layer, new layer, and then it's just going to be transparent layer. Then I'll go to view and show grid and then snap to grid. Go to image and configure grid and it this is usually best if you change this width and height thing which um, it's chained right here so just uh, keep it chained. Usually I will go to 20 and if I like the size of that then I'll keep it but this for what I'm doing is too small so I'm just going to go to 50. Um, that's a little bit too big so let's go to about 30 and that is perfect. So, and you'll see that it's just a grid everywhere. So you'll just make it whatever size you want to, and it'll automatically snap to the grid wherever you make it, as long as you have the um, snap to grid um, clicked, checked thing. So you'll just make it however big you want. And I'm going to do mine about, um, I guess about right here. But um, you do want to make sure that it's the same size as a thumbnail. So what you can do is open up one of your thumbnails here. So that's what I'm going to do. And then you can resize your thumbnail to whatever size you want it to be. So let's go ahead and do that. And I think that'll be pretty good size. And then you can just move this to wherever you would like. Um, yeah, that's a little bit too small. So I'm actually going to make it a little bit bigger. And I'm going to put it about right there. And that is perfectly fine. I'm going to do um, three squares away from the uh, the side over here and then you can press Control c and then Control v and that will duplicate the layer and then you'll right click go to layer to new layer and then it'll add another layer over here and then you can just drag this to the opposite side make sure it's three away from um this side as well and then um it will line up the top and this side if you have the grid enabled and then uh, you can turn off your grid here so just go to show grid snapped grid and then you will want to add your texts so um actually for this you may want to keep the grid enabled that way you can make sure it's lined up to the side if you want it lined up to the side um, if not then you know feel free to wing it and then yeah so this side over here is where i have my previous videos so the font i use for that is Puro Besto, which i'll have to go find because sometimes it doesn't search it Right here, this is the font I use, Porto Besto, so you can do that and then type in whatever you want this part to say. Mine says previous, so that's what I'm going to put. So there we go. And then this size is usually about what I use. So let me just turn off the grid real quick and then you can move it to wherever you like. And I'm going to put mine about right there. I don't want it exactly lined up with the edge of this. So um, yeah, that's where I'm going to put it. And then you can turn on your layer again so that you can see. And I'm going to line it up with this um, line. That way I can make sure it's lined up over here. Um, what's this one? Yeah, this one. Okay, so I'm going to line it up over here and then just pull this out. There, and then this side over here is where I have my featured video. So I'm just going to type in featured real quick. And then you'll see that it just automatically puts it over to this side and that's not where I want it. And I don't want to drag it over here and try to get it to match up with that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go down here to justify over in the tool options. And I will click on the second one right here, right justified. And it will move it over to this side. And then over here, I usually put a space because with this specific font, um, you don't have to do this with every font. But if a font like cuts off the text here, like if I click here, you'll see that the D's cut off. Um, you can put a space after the D and it will fix that. So there. And uh, then I'm going to go to outro. And then I can see here that um, this is, it, it's about the same. But I will drag it over just a little bit if I can. Okay, I can't. So I'm just going to leave it like that because it's close enough. And then you can um, turn off your grid and look at it if you would like to. So yeah, that looks pretty fine right now. So I'm going to go back to my grid. And then down here is where I have my links. So I'm just going to make a new layer real quick. There we go. And then I'm just going to color in some squares over here. Make sure they're lined up where I need them to be. Okay, right there is perfect. And you just want to have, um, these are where um, I put my links. And so what you can do, you can go onto Google and find um, the logo for Twitter or whatever. You can make your own, you know, that's perfectly fine as well. Or just whatever but um yeah I made my own which I just uh drew them in my little sketch thing and then added the uh, little text logo thing over it 
so that it is recognizable but you know you can just sketch yours out however you want to if you're good at that stuff or you can just um use one use the icons that you um can look for on google just make sure that it's a high resolution icon and that it's free to use so now that i have this i'm just gonna um you know take off the grid and then you'll want to be sure that you unclick the snap to grid then here I'm just going to mark where my links go. So this one is my Facebook one. So I'm just going to type out the text. I'm not going to put my links for the tutorial because, you know, it'll just be a different link for whatever. And I am going to use a different font for this. I believe the font I used is Century Goth. So let me find that. Yes, there we go. And you'll want to make this font a little bit smaller. Um, just whatever size looks best with your um, link and you're going to make sure that they're not overlapping and, and that they're all on one line. So I usually probably use a smaller font than this one. So I'm just going to go to about 30 and that will be perfectly fine. I want to make sure that it's big enough so that people could see it, but not too big so that it's overwhelming. And then down here, I'll just put Twitter for here. I'll just put Instagram and then over here is going to be the same as the featured. You want to go over here to justify and write justified if you're using this um, similar layout. So you'll do that and then you'll go over here and I think this is where I have my Tumblr probably or you can just put your YouTube link if you want and then with this font you don't have to add the space afterwards because it doesn't cut it off so it, it is just fine the way it is. And then um, these are where my logos will be in these black squares so I'm just not going to um, change those because they're fine the way they are but um, you would add those logos the same you would add your logo and then for these two right here I'm just going to go ahead and merge these two layers together so merge them down and then if I hide it you'll see that they're merged, merged together and then I'm just going to right click alpha to selection and then click on my bucket fill tool and then right click layer new layer and then just a transparent layer and then I'm going to make these black so just click inside the square and it'll color it black and then you can just go ahead and get rid of that layer so just delete that Oop, i don't know what happened okay so yeah just delete that and then for my thumbnails i'd like to um have like a shadow under them so what i'm gonna do i'm going to right click on the um black box layer the alpha to selection and then create a new layer so you right click layer new layer and then it's just going to be transparent and then you'll click this and i'm going to switch my colors here because i want this layer to be white so i want to click that and it's going to be white and then um you can go up here to the opacity and that is just going to be turned down a little bit so um probably about 40 to 50 percent it really doesn't matter because you're not actually going to be seeing this part um because that's where you're going to have the thumbnails whenever you get on um whenever you edit it on youtube and then you'll click um the shadow layer again the one that has the black squares then i'm going to go to filter blur gaussian blur and then i'll change this to about 25 or so and yeah that works and then i want to um change that down a little bit as well and then you know you can uh keep this at full opacity if you want it's completely fine but you know i just like to have mine down a little bit just in case and then uh yeah so that's where the thumbnails will be then I believe I have another box under my links, which I mean you can add, but um, as long as you're using a font that stands out from the background, like I'm using a black font against a white background, so I don't really have to add a box under this so that you can see the font better or anything. So um, yeah, it'd just be fine to just leave it blank or you can just add more decorative detail to it if you would prefer. But I'm just going to keep it the way it is. And be sure that whenever you're um, thinking of the idea, that you think of everything you want to add to your end slate. So uh, for mine, I made a list. I put um, the things I wanted to add to mine were logo, previous video, a featured video, and then my social links. So you're going to need to make note of all the social links you want to add to it. Mine was just four, so it evened up pretty nicely. If you have more, you can just put um, a straight line across down here and then put the links underneath it or just put your username for those underneath it. And then you'll just want to put empty boxes for anything that you're going to put a logo in. Like for my logo up here, um, if I wanted to add the logo on YouTube, I would probably move it down here because up here I can't add the thing to it because it's not in the box area where I can add links. So if I was going to add my logo here, I would just not add my logo to this and it just look like this. And then 
whenever you upload your video and you have your insta and everything um you would just add your subscriber button here and um you'd want to make sure that these boxes were small enough so that the thing isn't overlapping so that the logo isn't overlapping the other boxes because then it won't work at least i'm assuming because whenever they overlap there's like this little red area thing and i'm not allowed to save it so yeah so i just add my logo like this and it works fine so once you have your insight done because like i said it's just going to be a basic template it's not going to be the actual thing you're not going to add any of the thumbnails or anything here um you're just gonna have your template and then you will want to go to file and um just so that it's easy to edit later on if you like mess something up if you have a wrong link if one of your links changes or you want to add new links or something to it like uh, for your social or if you want to change any of the text or anything or you want to change your logo or you want to change your design but you want to keep the same layout just to make it easy for that you'll go to um, file and save as and then um i'm just gonna save mine randomly here and then you'll want to save it well i'm just gonna save name mine outro because that's what it's just named and you'll want to save it as a dot xcf that way you can open it back up in gimp and it's easy to edit from there because it won't merge any of the layers or anything you'll have all your layers you'll be able to change anything you want and then that'll be good and just save it but um, i'm not going to save this because for the rest of the tutorial i'm just going to show you mine but um, yeah, to save this, you'll want to just save it as a, an image. So just go to export as, and then you can save it as a JPG or a PNG, whichever one you prefer. And um, you know, I just saved mine as a JPG because it works, so why not? So I'm just gonna go into Movie Maker now and show you guys the rest of the tutorial. So now that we have Movie Maker open, you're gonna go up here to add videos and photos. You're going to find your photo, and mine's right here. This is the one I use, outro. And you can see it right there. And an outro cannot be longer than 10 seconds long. And, um, in this method, at least. If you're using an insight, it can't be more than 10 seconds long. If you're just using annotations, it can be however long you want it to be. But with the insight, you can't have it longer than 10 seconds because it won't um, register it. It'll only add the things at the last 10 seconds of your video, which I learned the hard way whenever I did a video with my sister. But um, yeah, you'll go to video edit tools, change the duration to 10.00, and that'll be 10 seconds long. And then, you know, you can see it, it'll play it, but it's not doing anything because it's just a picture. And then you want to go to home and add your music. So I'm going to go to add music and then add from P music from PC, add music, and you will find your preferably non-copyrighted music that you added to your computer and then you'll want to go to uh choose the one that you're going to use for your insight the one i use is this one right here tasker highland i got from no copyright sounds which is the same place i get my intro music and my speed build music so i'm just going to open that and it'll just open at the beginning of the song which is what i use you can um, change it around to whatever part of the song you want by changing the start point here but i'm just going to keep mine at the beginning because that's what i use and then I'm going to go ahead and change the fade in and out here. So, um, yeah, I just usually have mine at fast. And I'm going to change the music volume because Movie Maker makes the volume really, really loud. So I'm going to put it down here to just, just right past this first notch. If you put it on the other side of the notch, then there's going to be no sound at all. So I just put it a little bit past that. And then I will just click play here so you guys can see it. And yeah, that's basically your end slate. And then um, once you're happy with it, which I am, um, you would just go to over here and save movie. And then you'll use the exact same setting that you used for um, your intro and that you're gonna use for your videos and everything, which is right here. This is the one I made last time, but you know, you'll just click it and then um, save type as Windows Media Video File. That way you're able to open it back up in Movie Maker and then you'll just change it whatever. Um, change the name to whatever. I'm just going to name it to end because why not? And then just save it and it'll go pretty fast because it's only 10 seconds. And then once that is completed, you'll hear that boop sound probably. And then just close that. And then um, you can save project as that and it'd be easy to change it later if you don't want to start from scratch which i mean it's only one image that you change time for and add music so it's not 
too big of a deal if you have to start over with your insulate if you're not adding any um, extra fancy stuff to it in Movie Maker. So yeah, you don't really need to save a project for the method that I am doing. But, you know, if you want to, then just go to Save Project As and then just save it somewhere easy to find and you'll be able to open it um, over here from the recent projects later on. And yeah, that's basically it. So uh, I'm not going to show you um, how I edit my videos because I did that at the end of the intro video. I just showed you quickly how to add the intro and the end slate and then the video um, goes between the two clips. So um, you guys can go back and watch that. It's towards the end of the video. So, um, yeah, you guys can just go back and watch that if you would like to see how you, how you do that. But, uh, yeah. And, again, this is just how I make my insulate. This is not, um, the most amazingly awesome, uh, insulate way of creationing. So, um, if you were hoping for that, I'm sorry. Okay, so I was initially going to end the video there. However, I thought it might be helpful to show you, uh, how to actually add the insulate cards. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, first, you'll want to uh, look to see how long the video is. For this specific video, it's 25 minutes and 22.7 seconds long. So since my insight is 10 seconds long, it's pretty easy to um, figure out where I need to start my insight cards. So I just take off 10 seconds from that, which will be 25 minutes and 12.7 uh, seconds. So I'll just take this thing here and drag it to... Um, 12.7 seconds there and here you'll see the end slate and then you'll go to add element and then I'm just going to add a video to these or a playlist that's usually what I add I don't add a subscribe button or a channel or a link or anything like that I just uh, click create and then I will do uh, for my previous video I'll choose a video or playlist and I'll go to the previous video in this series which is this one right here and then I'll create element and then it'll just put it up here in the corner. You will drag that into your box and um, it will snap to a grid here. If you don't want it to snap, you can go to this and um, snap element, snap to element and then snap to grid. Make sure they're unchecked and then you could just freely move it wherever you want to. And then you could just drag it to whatever size it is. Unfortunately, my boxes are a little bit smaller than what they're meant to be. Well, they're a little bit misshaped than what they're supposed to be, I guess. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. It, but it's fine because you won't really see the box underneath the video uh, plate thing card. So, um, yeah, it's perfectly fine. And then over here for my featured video, I usually put a playlist or just uh, either best for viewer or, you know, you just put whatever you want to. You put your most recent upload. For this, I'm just going to uh, choose a random video that I want to feature. I guess I'll do this uh, build I did a few days ago. So I'll just click that and then you'll see right here it's red. I I'm pretty sure that means you can't actually put it there. So you'll just want to drag that over here and then try to get them to the best size you can. So uh, yeah, I'm just gonna drag that and then move it around. And then once you have it uh, the way you want it and it looks like it's about, uh, actually that doesn't look like it's the same. But yeah, whenever they um, look roughly the same size, like these pretty much look the same. And you'll see this blue area right here. That's the only place you can put things. Like I can't drag anything up or anything. So uh, that's what I was talking about whenever I was uh, saying there's like a little uh, area that you're allowed to put things in. And so, yeah, that's basically it. And then uh, at the end of your video, people will just be able to click on them, go to that video and so that you don't have to do this every single time because I know it would get a little bit tedious to have to uh, drag them and resize them and everything and make sure that they're the same size and everything. Um, what you can do, once you have the first one saved, you know, you just click the save button whenever you're done. Be sure to save it because it won't save if you don't. But um, once you have the first end slate done for a video and then you upload your next video and you want to have just the same end slate, layout and everything you can go to import from video and then just click uh, one of the videos that you have the end slate set for so I'll just click on the first one because I have the same end slate for all of them and then you'll go to import and then uh, this is just gonna ask me to replace because I already did this end slate so that doesn't really matter because it won't show up for their figures and then it'll just uh, replace it with the same videos that was in the previous the um, video you're importing from so what you can do to change those for the specific video that you're uploading today 
uh, like this one right here, my le Link Ryland Create a Sim is the previous video. So I'll click this Edit Element button here, this little pencil, and then you'll just choose the video you want. It's previous, so I'm just going to go to the same one, just the previous episode of Galaxy Switch because that's what I'm editing here. And then for the featured video, uh, you can go to it, or here it is, how I make my intro, and then just do the same thing. You can get a best for viewer. That's what I like to do sometimes if there's not a specific video that I want to feature. And then you just click save. And it'll just be a black box because it's going to be different for each um, person who views the video. And it'll just show based on their interests and everything, like their search history and stuff. So, uh, yeah, that's always a good option to go with. And then once you're done with that, you just click save and your video is pretty much done with the insulates at least. So, yeah. Uh, now back to our regularly scheduled program. But yeah, that is basically it, you guys. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like it, please leave a like, comment, or subscribe. And if you'd like to see any more tutorials, then let me know in the comments. And maybe I'll do a tutorial if, you know, I feel like I'm capable of doing so. But yeah, these are basically just how I do these things. They're probably not the most efficient or the most advanced. But, you know, they're just simple methods of how I do these things and what I learned from hours and hours and days and weeks of watching loads of tutorials. So, yeah, hopefully it helps somebody. Um, again, thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!